Yes, sir. We're here again, y'all. Yes, sir. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we are again. Here I am, the Big Time Show Podcast. Being seen live here on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Twitch. Also being heard live, of course, at the home base of the Big Time Show Podcast, which is, of course, Podbean. Welcome again. I'm on time today. Three o'clock on the dot. Here I am. Here you are. What is going on, everybody? What's going on? Listen, before we get started, as usual, I asked it for those that are here. Will you please share? Help your boy out here. What's up, Bruce? I see you, man. What's going on? Thank you for popping in with me so far. Listen, if you uh can, will you share with all the people that you may know who may be interested in some little cowboy talk and even invite the cowboy haters. They're needed to, uh, they fuel the show. You understand they, their, their, their high opinions of the Dallas Cowboys is what fuels the show. Uh, so if you please, why don't you help them out and, and join them, uh, bring them on in too. Uh, before we get started, of course, uh, we want to share, of course, what we are doing as far as um, our uh, music that you heard, which, of course, is being heard, uh, given to us, excuse me, by Alex S. Winters on Instagram. Um, Alex S. Winters on Instagram, appreciate him letting me use uh, the music that you have heard uh, for my opening uh, or my beginning to um, my podcast show. Forgive me for looking down, but I am presently trying to uh, share this as much as I can with uh, some groups that I am in. Uh, hope you are doing that as well. Uh, maybe not. Uh Appreciate Alec for letting me use it. Fine young man, fine gentleman. I appreciate him for letting me do it. Um, uh, what am, what is something that I had? Oh, I'm just getting here. I've been rushing, uh, trying to get back home. I uh, had a lot to do. I am unfortunate that I am going to miss um, my guy. Thank you, Bruce, for sharing. I just saw that. I appreciate that. I'm looking at my phone. Appreciate you, Bruce, so much uh, for sharing. I'm going to get some of these preliminaries out the way before I get started. I am uh, I am really upset because I had a chance to meet one of my patrons today, and I'm not going to be able to get the chance to uh, uh, to to meet him personally. Uh, and that is Gary Bryant, who's here in my hometown right now in Memphis. Uh, with his family who came to Memphis. He lives in Tennessee, but I think he stays in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but he's here in Memphis, and I've been uh, getting with him the whole day trying to figure out uh, how we can hook up, but it don't seem like we're going to be able to do that. Uh, so um, I I'm a really, I really wanted to meet him today. Uh, but it don't look like I'm going to get the chance to do that. But, Gary, when you come in, or just in case you see this replay, brother, man, I wish I could have been able to, to catch up with you while you're here uh, in Memphis. Um, uh, I really uh, wanted to meet him. Uh, fine brother, and I uh, appreciate him for doing it. What's up, E. Kush? I see you, man. Thank you for popping in. Uh, and those that have done it. Listen, before we uh, – before I get on my rant and my roll, uh, I guess I started off this way. Those that are on pod being, listen, uh, I've been having, I ain't going to say a lot. I've just had a couple of people who have, um, who have asked me, how do I become a patron of the show and all that kind of stuff? And how can I support your podcast? And, uh, and I'm appreciative for, for all those people that, uh, obviously want to, 
Um, you know, I didn't, I don't be thinking about that. Uh, but they want to come in and help me out. So I appreciate that. Um, and I, I do. So uh, for those that are watching Facebook, YouTube, uh, f- uh, uh, Twitter, and Twitch, here it is. Bam. There it is in your chat uh, box there. There it is in your chat box there. If you want to become a, a member of the, I guess, of the of the big time show podcast, whatever. There it is. Hey, James, how you doing, man? Uh, all of those that want to, uh, do that, please join in, uh, with that. There it is right there in your, uh, right there. It's in your chat line. All you gotta do is click on to that. It carry you that and you'll be able to see the information. If you're on pod all you have to do is real simple. Just push that button where it says, become a patron and it'll carry you straight to what you need to do. But whatever you do, listen, it's not required that you do it. I'm not, my life is not dependent upon, uh, finance for this show. Uh, this is really a hobby. I would accept it of course. Uh, and I appreciate anybody that supports me. I'll take it. Uh, no question, but it's not intended. I just want you guys just come hang with me to be honest with you. And so if you do not follow my show or follow my page, at least do that. Go to the Big Time Show page on Facebook or the Big Time Show channel on uh, YouTube. Uh, if you're on Twitch, um, uh, there it is for that. Uh, Big Time underscore 73. Follow the show. Subscribe to the show. If you're on Twitter, uh, it's right here. At Big Time Lou, go follow me. Uh, it's gonna be all this stuff is gonna be live. Just follow me if you you don't want to become. You can support me in that way. I appreciate it. Uh, it's no big issue, a big deal. I just want uh, you to come follow me. Just trying to grow the show. Now that I got that all out of the way. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk about this week. Uh, as we are moving into getting closer. And closer to the new uh to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, we're getting real close to it, y'all. It, these little 80 days, 90 days will be here so fast, it'll make your head spin. We're getting closer. And things are slowly but surely beginning to take shape. And I'm gonna be honest with you. And you can judge me and say, hey, you know, false hope again. You're getting hype and out. Look, uh, you know, I I am one of the most realest people that you ever going to meet. Uh, I'm going to tell it like it is and, and let the truth just have its way and let the chips fall where they may. That's just how I am. I'm built that way. I, I don't lean a lot toward, at least when it comes to sports, I don't lead a lot towards optimism uh, i look i'm the one that looks at the picture and and says okay this is what it is uh you know i i, I ain't i don't look at the picture and say what it ought to be what it could be what it should be no if it's here that's why i'm gonna look at you like i ain't playing that what if game and all that i'm telling you now i'm believing uh, right now that so far things are slowly but surely falling into place okay i i, I i'm coming to that bruce that's my first topic you in my notes bruce Cal- Cali. Let, let, let me tell y'all now now remember what i said bruce and everybody's watching the bruce is leading me in it's like he's looking at my notes right now he it's like he's looking at him. He's leading me in, and so since he put it out there, here I come. Remember what I said. I'm looking at things as it is. I'm not looking at things in in Fantasy Island land, okay? Which leads slightly what Bruce Kelly just put there by his comment. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, Bruce. What's up, Newt? I see you. What's up, Newt? I see you, Newt. 
Uh, I see Randy. There was a press conference with which Coach McCarthy had, and a lot of questions were thrown his way from both sides of the football. And one of the questions was talking about, "Hey, Mike, I see you, man. Thank you all for tuning in, man. I appreciate all y'all uh, coming in uh, now." Uh, there was a lot of conversation, and one of the conversations was, or questions, I'm sorry, to Coach McCarthy was by wide receivers. <clears throat> and Coach McCarthy slipped in a nice little caveat, a little nugget in while he was talking. He was talking about the receiving core, and all of a sudden he said something that drove Cowboy fans crazy on both directions. Uh, and that was, he said, about, uh, Tony Pollard, our backup running back, playing wide receiver. And uh, he, he pointed out and said that uh, Tony has been working in, hey, Tommy, what's up? Uh, has been working in the rotation of playing receiver in practice. That one statement drew through Cowboy Nation into an uproar both positive and negative. And it was hot topic for news. I'll go ahead and jump in just a little bit, but I, 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 it's a part in there that y'all didn't listen to. And a lot of parts that a lot of people didn't want to pay attention to and then harp on, which is what I'm going to talk about. Bruce, you right. For people that is from Memphis, Tennessee, where I am right, now, this is where I lived all my life. I I am here. And if you lived in Memphis, Tennessee, and if you are uh, uh, interested in the University of Memphis football team, then you already know what Tony Pollard brings to the table. We knew uh, a long time ago because we saw Tony Pollard and what he did here at Memphis. Just in case for some of you don't know, I'm quite sure you know by now, but we saw it. We saw it live in the color. I sat at the Liberty Bowl, watched Tony Pollard play live for years. Tony Pollard did it all at Memphis. Tony Pollard lined up in the backfield. Tony Pollard lived up, I mean, lined up outside receiver Tony Pollard lined up sometimes in the slot position Tony Pollard sometimes lined up in a two back offensive set where two running backs was there where he was treated almost as something like a H back some of you would call it a full back of course he ain't bang it up in there trying to block nobody but he they used to swing him out the backfield and catch the ball Tony Pollard ran kicks Tony Pollard ran punts. In other words, Tony Pollard did, did it all except throw the football. That's what he did. And he excelled wherever you put him at. Tony Pollard was a dominant, and that, listen to my wording now, Tony Pollard was a dominant player when he lined up as a wide receiver, primarily in the slot position. The reason why he was a lineup in the slot because the way Memphis played, Memphis spread you out. They their first choice of, of an offensive formation was the shotgun formation. They they put three receivers out, four receivers out, one running back. I mean bubble. I mean stack positions, uh, double, three wide. I mean just everything. And the purpose for Memphis was doing that was to get mismatches. And they used Tony Pollard as almost kind of what we would call on the defensive side of the ball. We'll say this person plays the joker position. When you line up and play the joker position on defense, that means you line up anywhere. That's what Tony Pollard did on offense at Memphis. So him playing wide receiver is natural for him. Tony Pollard had more receiving yards at Memphis than he had running yards. All you got to do, I see my brother on here, Kevin. 
he's on here carrying it. He just put it up a few seconds ago. All you got to do is turn on the Memphis film. Watch Tony Pollard. Creator of mismatches. No linebacker could hold him. Nobody. He was too fast. Can run routes. I'm talking about legitimate a route runner. He can do it. So him lying here hearing Coach McCarthy saying that Tony Pollard lined up at receiver and learning positions and saying all that, that was no surprise to hear they how well he did. That was no surprise to me. Actually, it's a crime, to be honest with you, that Kellen Moore did not use Tony Pollard to his full extent or his full capability. I don't care nothing about our third receiver and our fourth receiver, which was Cedric Wilson. When you have a weapon like Pollard, and he is a weapon, y'all. I'm, I'm, I, I, I've been knowing it. I mean, I, I, I've seen it. It's a shame that Kellen Moore hadn't used it to his full potential. He's more than a bag of running back and a kickoff returner. He's more than that. Way more than that. He can change games. Uh, you put him in open field, nobody can can hold him. Nobody. He's a problem. If you line him up right, and if he gets his hand on the ball against a linebacker, nine times out of ten, he's going to win that matchup. And he can catch the football. So that's Kellen Moore, not utilizing the players at their best skill sets. That's, that's on Moore, which I'll come back to that in a second. Here's the caveat that y'all didn't really pay attention. Y'all got excited about Pollard being in wide receiver. A lot of people got excited about that. I did too. But then I heard, if you go back and listen to Coach McCarthy, you also heard him say this at, at, at the last second. He said, Tony got out there because a lot, a few of our wide receivers were hurt. And right then and there, that's when my whole attitude changed. So y'all got excited about Kellen Moore. I mean, about Tony Pollard possibly playing wide receiver a lot. Can I go ahead and just tell y'all this? Now, y'all come on, kid. But see, this is why I'm going to change the game up here. Because y'all got, y'all stuck on Pollard. I, I heard the other part what Coach McCarthy said, and that's that's what I'm going to talk about. He said because all our other receivers were hurt. Now, I don't know which ones he was talking about. At least they didn't practice. You can make your own guesses who those people are, which tells me, number one, Pollard got in there because the receivers weren't there. That that put a little pin in my balloon, okay? Y'all, y'all stayed hype. I, I listened and I said, "Oh, okay. Well, what? Okay, you know who was it? I don't know who it was. I know it was CD Lamb. We saw video of Lamb showing out already. Uh, I, I saw that. Uh, I, I, I believe Cooper may have been out there. My, uh, you know, that's just a guess. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But all I know is Coach McCarthy said it was some receivers, which means more than one." that were not practicing that day, so Tony just kind of filled in. That's what I heard. What does that tell me? They tell me this, y'all. Don't y'all get too hyped about Tony Pollard playing wide receiver. <laughs> y'all y'all get, hey, Cedric, <laughs> that, that, that's what they tell. That, look, you interpret it your way, I interpret it my way, Okay. The reason why Pollard, y'all, y'all got hype over Pollard playing wide receiver. What's up, GT? My boy out here. There, there, there you go. Thank you, GT. GT, you, you with me? The reason why Tony Pollard played at wide receiver on practice that day was because you heard if y'all, y'all stop, y'all put a period on when Tony Pollard got in. Y'all didn't listen to the rest of it intently, or you didn't want to concentrate on it. Tony Pollard was in because some receivers weren't practicing. I can't, I can't get too hyped about Tony, I, even though I know now I'm, finna, I'm coming back y'all in a minute because y'all thinking 
I, I don't like Tony Pollard. I done told y'all his resume. I was with him. I seen him. I know how dangerous he is. Kellen Moore just don't know how dangerous he is. I know how dangerous he is. I, I know it. But he was in there because some people weren't there. Now, I will say this about Tony Pollard because I know what he's capable of. I've seen it with my own eyes. Tony Pollard probably got in there and opened up some eyes because it really wasn't their intention to line him up out there on for practice because if 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 the kid from Stanford, as you just saw Geechee say, if if, uh, if 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 Vasher also was out there, if it was if it was some more uh, receiver, whoever was out, those guys would have got those reps if they would have been there. But see, what Pollard can do is open up your eyes. That's why he was impressed. Because my question is, did Pollard, did Pollard line up last year at receiver in practice? Because if he did, they would have already known. I don't think he got out there too many times. Nobody really hurt. Okay? So, so when he lined up in the slot, I'm quite sure they go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What? What? He, he, he could have been doing that all the time, but you know, they just not noticing it. They line him up on the other side, other side of the other formation they slot. And he bakes somebody again. They go, whoa. Man, not only is he quick, but my goodness, he can he can run a, a nice little slant route. He, he can he can he can he can catch the ball. Like, wow. Wow, 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 wow. And I and people from Memphis and people who watch Memphis football been saying, like, what y'all what y'all surprised for? We we've been telling y'all this kid can do this, but it opened up their eyes. Which leads to this. Now let's play. Let's play. Tony Pollard opened up some eyes in practice because of, of his abilities. Okay. Here's my problem with everybody getting hyped about Pollard playing wide receiver. Well, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this. Here's my thought. If Pollard is better than Vasher, if Pollard is better than the kid from Stanford, if Pollard is even better than Cedric Wilson, here's my question. Will they line them up there? Will, will they will they even line them up there? If the Cowboys run a four receiver wide receiver set, I'm sorry, a four wide set. If he is better, will the politics come into play, man? See, 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 y'all, see, I. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not. I'm not. I, I. I still see some of the same faces in positions that make these calls, and I know their history, so I can't get hype. I, I y'all can get hype, and I'm not gonna put a pin in your balloon. But I still see Kellen Moore over there. I still see Coach McCarthy not being really involved in play calling and in formation setting. I still see. I, I still got some of the same faces. I, I still got some of the same, and 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 we all know by now that the Cowboys necessarily don't put the best players on the field. We know that Donovan Wilson took three years before he finally got in. Supposed to have been in. Supposed Donovan Wilson supposed to have been in a long time ago. Took him three years. I mean that that's just one name. So so saying the Cowboys will put the best players. On the field when needed, that remains to be seen with me. Now y'all may think whatever you may think. I I I don't I I I can't get hype. I'm sorry. I I I and, and look, I got my shirt on. I'm a cowboy fan. I I love them. I I I'm hoping that. But look, look, look. I, I look. Don't get look. We got enough. This is just me now. This is just me. Uh, uh, this is just me. 
We got enough receivers, okay? Some of them are already proven, okay? If some of them are already proven, look, Noah Brown, I'm just going from the bottom up. Noah Brown is proven. Now, you know, he no, he ain't got no thousand yards receiving, but Noah Brown is a good wide receiver. Cedric Wilson, when healthy, is a good, you know, good receiver. Okay. Why are we even entertaining? I, I, why are we even entertaining? Uh, uh, I mean, if you're going to tell me Pollard is better, I'm just throwing those two names out. I'm fine with it. Just put them on the field. I ain't got no problem with it. Uh, Gallup, C.D., Cooper are out of the question. We know those are your top three. If you're telling me that Pollard is the best receiver from that point on, I don't have no problem with it. But are you going to put them out there? Or are you going to sell four wide? Well, no. Let me let me put in uh let me put in Vasher when you know Pollard is better. Or let me put in the kid from Stanford. Or let me put in Noah Brown. It like if you know these are your best four, put your best four out there. And history shows. And y'all know I'm telling the truth. I know some of y'all lost some of y'all. History shows that we don't put the best players on the field. Everybody know Blake John was better than Jason Witten the last two years. Blake John couldn't get, get on the field because Jason Witten hauled at the spot. We don't put the best players on the field. Donovan Wills sat on the bench three. We don't put the best players on the field. We don't. We don't. So while y'all getting hyped and putting all this energy into Tony Pollard starting, and yes, he will create mismatches. Yes, he will. No doubt about that. Yes, he can catch the ball. Yes, 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 yes. Once again, I'm in the wait and see department. Because I know who my offensive coordinator is. Exactly, Michael Evans. I see you You understand what I'm saying. Put your, I, I mean, I come from a, from a place in football where you put your best players on the field at whatever position that is. Politics aside, you're trying to win, you put your best people on the field. If Pollard is the best fourth receiver on this football team, cool. Just put them out there. But please, let me ask y'all this, though. If you do kind of, and he's going to play everything. Tony Pollard's going to play everything. If you do that, he's going to do everything, which is what he did in Memphis. That's not nothing new to him. But please keep this in mind, y'all. Please keep this in mind. While y'all trying to rush him to play the slot position, please keep in mind, he is our backup running back. Please keep this in mind, y'all. Zeke has been banged up the last couple of years. Please, please, please keep this. In other words, you, you got to... You know, I don't care how much weight Ezekiel has done lost. I don't care how I don't care what he looked like on these Instagram uh videos and running across bags that don't hit and and cutting and through cutting through people that don't hit you and folks ain't trying to knock the ball out your hand and all that kind of stuff. I don't care nothing about them little videos. I don't care nothing about that. You're supposed to look good. You're supposed to look good doing that. I don't care. I don't care. Tony Pollard is our backup running back, y'all. I mean, we we get you know, and he ain't gonna line up a lot of receivers anyway. Cause Lamb and Cooper and and uh, Gallup are gonna do you know, eighty five, ninety five percent of that anyway. So it'd be special when we line up in a four wide receiver set. And yes, the ideal. Just thinking about it, I mean, the ideal Pollard and Lamb and Gallup and Cooper out there at the same time. That's a problem. Ain't no doubt about that. 
I'm not I'm not coming against that. I'm just saying, you know, I know I know how this thing been going because I got the same people there. And and unfortunately, I know that pattern. And they don't put the best players on the field. I, that's all I'm saying. I know what Paula can do. I know what he can do. Paula could be our third down running back. Nickel, I mean, our third down for our running back. I'm still waiting on the day for Kellen Moore to put Pollard and Ezekiel in the backfield together. I'm still waiting on that. I thought that would have happened when Pollard was a rookie. Like, like that, that line up in the shotgun, Pollard on one side, Ezekiel on the other side. Come on, man. I'm still waiting on that formation. I ain't seen it yet. Kellen Moore ain't used Tony Pollard right yet. He ain't used him yet. And y'all getting excited over him lining up like he Drew Pearson or somebody. Can we get him to line up in the running back position right first? Can Kellen Moore design some plays where is Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard in the backfield at the same time? Can we get excited about that first? Before y'all trying to make him Julio Jones. Can he just be a running back to catch the ball at the backfield like Marsha Falk used to do? And, and, and you know, guy like Camaro can do. Tony Pollard can play just like Alvin Camaro. He can. He can't carry the workload, at least I don't, you know. He never had to carry the workload in Memphis. Matter of fact, Pollard was listed as the third running back in Memphis behind Antonio Gibson. Yes, that same Antonio Gibson that's at Washington. I mean, at Washington football team now. And Henderson that's at, at the L.A. Rams. He was the third running back then. He never was the first running back. Can we just use him for that? And it ain't necessarily got to be called gadget plays. It's just I call this basic football sense. You want mismatches? Put a Ziggy Elliott on one side. Put Dak in the middle of the shotgun. Put Tony Pollard on the other side. You have to account for all of them. At the same time, you got Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup out there. What are you going to do? Y'all worried about lining them in the slot and all that kind of – there are so many different ways, and Kellen Moore has not done it. That's why I can't get hyped because of what I done seen already before. He has not used these guys. Somebody on here going to say, well, maybe he's seen the error his ways. Maybe he read it now. Maybe he got that. I hope so. I hope so. But until I see it, I'm going to let y'all have all that optimism. I'm going to let y'all have it. What's up, Pod Bean? What's going on, everybody? It's on Pod Bean. Y'all ain't talking to me. I see y'all in the house. But y'all ain't talking to me, but but it's cool. Just hang with me. Uh, I, you know, hey, he's a dangerous football player. Thank you, Kev. I see you, Kev. Kev. Kev hits the nail on the head right here. Kev says, the conscience says, he is not just a running back. He's a versatile football player. There's no doubt about it. that. That. That cannot, that's not even a debate. What's up? What's up, Gary? Gary, I already missed it, man. I told everybody. I, I had a regret today that you was in town. Look like I ain't going to be able to, to holler at you, man. Uh, Gary is here in Memphis right now. I think he's still here. Uh, I had a chance to meet him, but I, I, I things came up and I just could not get with him today. But Gary, man, I appreciate you, man. We're going to hook up on next time. Uh, Kevin says, he, it, that, that, let me put that up again. Kevin said it quickly. He is not just a running back. He's a versatile player. That is the God's honest truth. I hope Kellen Moore uses versatility. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Uh, okay, Gary, good, man. Y'all be safe out there on the road. Listen, I, I hope he uses versatility. He had to, he hadn't as of yet. And he's been with us. What is this? It would this be Tony's third year this year? I, I mean, he, it, it look, if you, he hadn't used his versatility yet. So, I mean, so I, I the, the Dallas Cowboys, watch this, y'all. I'm going to hurt some of y'all feelings right now, okay? 
and, and I'm included in this also. Okay, so I don't want you to think that it just I'm just talking to y'all and not include myself in here. It is. The Dallas Cowboys are far better scouts, game planners, and analysts than we are. You do realize that, right? These guys get paid millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars for a salary to watch football. That's it. Come up with game plans. These guys already knew, which is part of the reason why they drafted Tony Pollard. They knew what Tony Pollard could do. They already knew where Tony Pollard played at Memphis. They could tell you how many times he lined up in the slot, the percentage-wise. They could tell you how many times he lined up in the right slot, the left slot, what was most successful. They know all the analytics better than we do. And with even with all those analytics, Tony Pollard only did one or two things. He lined up and caught kickoff returns, and then he played the bag up running position. He never got in the slot. He never lined up as a receiver. They already knew what he was doing. They never gave him the opportunity or the chance. That's why I can't get hype about it, y'all. Y'all can get hype. Y'all, y'all, y'all hype. I, I read, I read all that kind of stuff. What up, JD? Y'all, y'all, y'all were hype, man. Woo! Yeah, y'all were hype. And I'm sitting there saying, like, why y'all so hype? Kellen Moore still is our offensive coordinator, right? We still begging Kellen Moore to run the football and how to line up in the red zone and who should get, you know, come on. I'm, I, I, you know, look. I, and some of y'all don't like my y'all don't like my pessimism. I understand. I, I you know, look, I have faith in Jesus. <laughs> I, I I don't have that same faith in Kellen Moore. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have. I I I've been burned too many times the last few years. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I've been burned by Kellen Moore too many times. I, I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I mean, y'all may have it. Hey, I'm cheering for Kellen Moore. He's my offensive coordinator. I just, I can almost tell you what he's going to do when they, when they line up. And it's so predictable. I, 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 what he should do, he don't do. And what he does do, he shouldn't. He's never used Tony Pollard right. I don't know why y'all got so hype. I've been waiting. I ain't want to bust y'all bubble. I just gonna wait till the podcast show to tell you. Calm down. Look, <laughs> Tony Pollard. Look, you gonna see Cedric Will if Cedric Wilson is healthy. Cedric Wilson will get a whole lot of more snaps at wide receiver than uh, 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 Tony Pollard. Uh. Mike Evans says, <clears throat> speaking of Kellen Moore, he never heard my opinion on the Ben McAdoo hiring. <sighs> ben McAdoo has a reputation of being a solid offensive mind. That's, that's all I can give him. I also will give him this. He's been a head coach in this league. Now, this is what I'm going to say about that. I don't have no problem with having a bunch of head coaches or former head coaches as a part of a staff. Some may disagree. I don't. When you get an offensive mind like Kellen Moore, who can move the football, Ben McAdoo can move the football, and then you get a defensive guy and Dan Quinn, who's a pretty good defensive coordinator. Can you imagine that that room and all the football tricks and strategy sessions? And you throw in Coach McCarthy in there too. Can you imagine all of that in there? And you you you're gonna come up with some good game plans. So Matt, I don't have no problem with McAdoo. The only question is how much is he going to, you know, have 
influence over Kellen Moore because he's been hired as a consultant, an offensive consultant for the team. So I'm quite sure the phone calls between him and, and Moore are going to be a whole lot. The question is, you know, how, how does that relationship work with Kellen Moore? So I don't have no problem with it. He's not a coach. He's a consultant. He won't be on the sidelines. Well, he might be, but he's not, you know, he's a consultant. He's not working every day. He may be at home watching game film, coming up with stuff. He do like Coach McCarthy said in the game plan. I mean, excuse me, in this interview, Coach McCarthy said about McAdoo that, that, that the way that he likes to run his system, he gave us some good stuff in this interview. He said that he likes to be ahead one week before the week gets there. In other words, we're playing Tampa Thursday, but Ben McAdoo will be working on week two's opponent. Give whatever he has to Moore and Coach McCarthy, and then they'll start working things out. In other words, that's what he's he's saying that's what he's going to do. He's not even worried about Tampa. Well, he's going to be worried about Tampa because that's the first game. But while we game planning for Tampa, he's going to be working on week two. There's nothing wrong with that. I kind of like it. I don't have no problem with McAdoo. You know, I don't care what he did with the Giants and all that kind of stuff. You know, it is what it is. I don't have no problem. Uh, so, I, 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 you know, again, y'all can get hype all you want over Tony Pollard playing wide receiver and all that kind of stuff. I'm not. I, I, I could care less. I could care less. Because he ain't going to line them up right in the first place. Now y'all, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't feel like he is. JD telling, I see you talking to uh, Cedric Scott. He says, he's a, yeah, you, you, I, you definitely been checking me out, JD. He's a disciple of, of Scott Linehan. Hopefully, McCarthy has worked his offensive mind with more for this upcoming season. That, that's the main reason why I can't get hyped. Because that kid, Kellen Moore, is a Living disciple of Scott Linehan. I've been saying that for, for, for months. And that's all he know. And if you know about Scott Linehan, you know the problems. At least if you've been following me for a long period of time, you already know how I feel about Scott Linehan. You know, it is what it is. So, y'all, look, if you like Pollard there, you probably going to have to put him at wide receiver on Madden <laughs> to get to get what you looking for. Because in real life, if Cedric Wilson is fine, the kid from Stanford, you know, uh, you know, Lamb, all these guys, they're the ones gonna be lined up inside. Even in a four wide receiver set, I'm not sure Pollard would get that opportunity to be the four receiver. So let's not get hyped. Let's see it first. Before we get all crazy, I, I love Pollard. I know what he's capable of doing. He would be dangerous, but I got Kellen Moore as my offense coordinator, who has a history of not putting the right people on the field. So I, I I'm not I'm not hype about it. Okay. I'm not hype about it at all. Uh another thing that I saw uh in camp, exactly. Another thing that I saw in camp was C.D. Lamb. Uh, I'm going on record right now. I'm going to make my first uh, prediction this year, I guess. Here it is. C.D. Lamb will be the best receiver on this team this year. He will take over. Amari Cooper's position as being the best receiver. He may not take over his position on the field, but CeeDee Lamb will be, barring injury, of course, CeeDee Lamb will be our best receiver this year. Uh, CeeDee Lamb has gotten bigger. Uh, he looked like he's gotten stronger. He already has attitude. He already has swag. He already can go catch the football. Uh, you know, I'm expecting him to take a gigantic jump this year if he got his quarterback and he stays injury-free. I'm expecting him to to take over now in his second year. 
Uh, if you remember my show with De Coach Dennis Simmons, who was the wide receiver coach, uh, who is the wide receiver coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, where, where CD played ball. I know you don't remember it, but I remember it well. He told us, told all of us, and I may have to replay that for you guys, but he told all of us that CD sat back this year and kind of, you know, tried to figure everything out. He didn't take kind of a leadership role because he didn't feel like it was his place. He said, but this year too, he going to go ahead and play like he's supposed to play. So that tell me that Coach Simmons probably got in his head, told him to go ahead and let's take over now. And I believe CD is getting ready to do that. CD caught a ball. Y'all done seen the film by now. Uh, he caught a ball over Anthony Brown, and which is another another whole topic of conversation by itself right there. He caught the ball. I'm going to say it one more time. He caught the ball over Anthony Brown. <sighs> okay. And uh, CD had a press conference and told everybody this year he had a wristband on and said, Y'all better get your popcorn ready. <laughs> I like that. He done borrowed from T.O. And he's starting to talk like T.O. And he got a little swag and he had a little look in his eye when he said it. And it looked like he was, you know, had, had a little problem. Looked like he had a couple screws that was loose. Looked like he was ready to ready to attack somebody. I like that. Uh, I'm expecting CD to show out this year. I'm expecting that. Since I just threw that out, let me say something about Anthony Brown. You know, ain't nothing changed with Anthony Brown. You know, every time I see Anthony Brown, I see the back of his jersey because usually the receiver's in front of him. And Anthony Brown doesn't make too many plays no more. I mean, and he already getting cracked in practice. So y'all already know because a lot of y'all – uh. Some of you think that he's going to be started, even though a lot of you guys want Joseph to start. But Andy Brown, there's a possibility he might start, okay? Uh, uh, okay. Somebody want to talk about the Lakers. I, I said James Godley, who's this? I said something about the Lakers uh, yesterday. I did a whole show on it, but I'm going to read your comment. Cause I like you. That's why. What you had to say there? I can't see it. Uh, I think we're talking about football. I know we're talking about, but I want to say something to you about the Lakers situation. I wasn't able to. I like LeBron. I'm not a Lakers fan, but what I think they need to get, and I like Brooklyn and Spencer deal with, would be a good combination. Okay, a good combination for LeBron for the Lakers now back to the back, big time regular schedule program. L O L. Uh, we don't need to add nobody, uh, James, that stay hurt. We got enough of that going on. Spencer D. Willis stay hurt. That's my only thing I'm gonna say about that. He stay hurt too much. He's a good player though. He he's solid, no question. He he can get his own shot, all that kind of stuff, but. Uh, you know, he stay hurt too much for me. We already got we already got a glass walking Anthony Davis that if you blow on him, he he gonna be out for thirteen games. LeBron is thirty, be thirty eight years old, thirty seven, thirty eight years old. You know, time is catching up with him. His body started to break down a little bit. We we don't need another guy that's gonna stay hurt. That's my only thing I say about about him. Now, let me say something about Anthony Brown, man. I'm tired of Anthony Brown. Okay. I love that he's a veteran and yes, he can teach some guys some stuff. But can he can he make one play? I mean, can he make a play, please? Speaking of which, let me get on y'all real quick. I got something else to talk about, but let me get on y'all real quick. Oh, I can't stand cowboy fans. I can't. If you like me, you will you'll notice that you are in a problem. If you're like me and you're a cowboy fan, 
you're a problem. Hey, good. Oh, man. What's up, Daniel? Oh, my man. My man, man, the good, the bad, and the ugly truth is in the house on Podbean. Man, where in God's name have you been, man? What's up, man? What's going on? Y'all excuse me while I talk to my guy real quick. I'm, I'm coming back, y'all. <laughs> what's up, man? I mean, what, what, what's up, man? Man, come on in here. Good to see you back, man. Now, I'm going to go on and crank it up since you done showed up. Uh, let me tell y'all something about what I don't like about Cowboy fans. And and I got and I'm a cowboy fan. Okay, this is what I don't like about y'all. If you listen to Coach McCarthy's uh, press conference, oh uh, no, excuse me, Coach Dan Quinn's press conference, the question was asked about Kelvin Joseph, and he wasn't on the field. And y'all read it too. He didn't practice. He didn't practice and all that kind of stuff. You know, he didn't practice, and y'all. Y'all, y'all immediately started y'all speculation and all that. And I'm in about, I promise, I'm in at least about 18 cowboy groups on Facebook. 18 cowboy groups. And and you cowboy fans just automatically started assuming that this kid was in the studio and this kid had other obligations and all that kind of stuff. And then what we found out was was that the man was just sick. <laughs> and y'all already assuming the worst and then put it out there like it's facts. Man, I, I, I told y'all we shouldn't have drafted him. I told you he ain't gonna be focused. I told you he ain't he ain't he ain't he ain't right. He not he ain't he he, he gonna mess this team up. The man was sick. That's why he didn't practice. He's sick. Where y'all get y'all information from? What? How you know he was in the studio? Where you where you get your information from? Where what? Where, where y'all get y'all information from? What 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 where did y'all get y'all information from? How you know he was he was out of town? How... Why, why y'all say that? Then you look. Then then the funny part is, once you hear that the man was sick, you didn't come out and say on your little group saying, "Man, I was wrong. I, I'm sorry. I I I I, I was misinformed. You were misinformed because you didn't get no information in the first place." <laughs> How you misinform when you ain't got no information? <laughs> you just got to guess. Look, you live way on the other side of the country, and you act like you right there in Dallas as a private investigator and can tell everybody what where's Kevin Joseph, where he was at, what's going on, What's going on? Sue guy Harvey. Here he come. This this is my guy. This is my guy right here. Starstruck original. Make a suit. Sue guy Harvey coming in. Come my sons at six. I can't stand it. Here he come. I'm talking cowboys, they Sue guy. Sue guy, I sent you information too since you're here. Ricky, I sent you a um an inbox a few uh weeks ago. You need to check that out. I need a suit. I got that out. Now you here live. I told you I need a suit. I need to talk to you. I need to see what I got to do. I ain't never got one from you, but I need one. Uh, just in case y'all want a tailor-made jogging suit or or he actually does suits and he does it for stars. And you got to pay some money now. You know, This is your guy. Y'all send me the chat box. Y'all put that in there and look at some of the amazing stuff that he has. He does tailored suits. He does tailored uh, jogging suits. He has a collection called Starstruck. I wouldn't wear it because I'm a little bit too old now. I can't. I can't wear that kind of stuff. Now, hey, Sue guy, I saw something you had my fraternity on there. Now, now that jogging suit I would wear. Uh, you know, so I, I need to talk to you about that one. But if you guys are interested, in that, check him out. 
just click on this stuff and you'll be able to see that. I want to know why y'all, where y'all information come from, though. All y'all Laker haters come here trying to distract me. I told y'all I'm talking Cowboys today. I talked Lakers yesterday. Where in the world y'all get y'all information from? You ain't come back and say nothing about Kevin, Kevin Joseph. You ain't say nothing like, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't say the right thing. Can y'all just let, can you just let, you know, be quiet and just and just see what's going on with Kelvin before y'all make y'all judgment? Can y'all, can y'all stop, can y'all stop that? Can y'all stop spreading, and it ain't y'all that's hanging with me now. There's going to be some folk watching the replay. Can y'all stop putting out false information when you don't know it? It's really only common sense. If you don't know, be quiet. Huh? If you know and you know it's factual, then you can put it out there. Some folks talking about here in the studio, and they weren't joking either. They said he was going to be a distraction for this team. The man was sick. That came from the Cowboys. That ain't come from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see you, Mike. You see what I'm saying? I, 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 I wouldn't have said what I just said unless it didn't come from the from the proper source. What I just said didn't come from me. That came from the Dallas Cowboys. One who is tied to the organization said the man was sick. That's why he missed practice. He was in the facility. He was just sick. He couldn't practice. You do realize people get sick, don't you? You realize that, right? You know, people, these are not machines. These are not robots. They're not clones. They're human beings. And uh, last time I checked, human beings sometimes get sick. (laughs) Huh? I, I can't stand y'all. I can't stand some of y'all cowboy fans. Some of y'all should be. Some of y'all should turn in some of you cats. Some turn in your cards. I, 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 I can't stand it. Stop assuming stuff. Stop it. You don't look. Let me tell y'all cowboy fans something. And this is me too. You don't know what's going on in OTAs right now. We don't know. You know why? Because the Cowboys have closed it off to the media. With the exception of a couple of people. So what does that tell me? Other than the players and the coaches and those few certain people that have been allowed to go in and watch practice, they are the ones that have the accurate information. They may have a different interpretation, but they saw it. If you're not in that room, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what that you yeah, we we're we're totally dependent upon them saying, yeah, Dak look good. Dak looks great. Dak looks gay. Hey, he looks wonderful. We don't know though. We don't know. We don't know if Dak played first and second down and went off the field for third down. We don't know if Dak played just first down. And then play second and third down. You know they try and preserve him, right? We don't know what he's doing. We don't know how many reps Ezekiel Elliott get. We don't know how many reps Tony Pollard got at wide receiver. We just guessing. We just talking. Y'all calm down, like y'all just like y'all y'all be talking like y'all in the huddle. <laughs> y'all y'all be talking like y'all in the huddle, hearing the play call. Y- y- y'all, y'all ain't like y'all right on the, <laughs> y'all ain't like y'all right in the, in the, in, in all the beatings, you know, I, I, I mean, come on y'all, I can't stand how y'all did Kevin Joseph, I can't stand, some of y'all looking at me, it ain't, it ain't y'all, some of y'all is watching me on this replay right now, some of y'all know you was one of the main ones typing fast, just typing, I told you, we can't depend on them. He already a distraction. No, man, the man was just sick, man. The man need medication. He need medication because he was sick. Can the man be sick? 
Oh my goodness. Let me get on to something else because y'all y'all didn't like that. But I'm just hey, I'm here to tell the truth. That's all. I'm here to tell the truth. Last thing, y'all, and I'll let you guys go. It's a nice Saturday evening. I'm going to end this today with what I left off with yesterday. Okay? You may have to go back and check out my show from yesterday. The last 10 minutes or so. Some people got offended because of the analogy that I put out. Some folks got some folks got a little upset. Some folks got a little upset of the analogy I put out yesterday. And I'm just here to tell you, quite simply, I don't care. Number one, um, I pride myself on being respectful. Number two, most importantly, I put out the truth. And then number three, sometimes the truth hurts. It's like, it is what it is. Y'all got upset with me because in the course of my talking yesterday, I had said about LeBron James that the way that the NBA is set up now, team-wise, one man cannot beat these stacked teams. It's, it's just not going to happen no more. And the Brooklyn Nets have a stacked deck that's so, so deep now that for the next two to three years, barring injury, of course, the next two to three years, they are going to have, that's going to be the team that you're going to have to see if you want to be a champion. I'm expecting if the Nets pull out, if, if, if the Nets can some kind of way get past Milwaukee, uh, I'm expecting the Nets to win the championship this year. If they get past Milwaukee. And if that is the case, the next two to three years, all of these guys that are superstars, but they long ranger type superstars, they're going to have to change teams if you want to win now. So I got to talking about LeBron, and I said that the Lakers are going to need a third dog. I'm not talking Lakers talk. I'm trying to get somewhere. I'm, I'm just setting it up. I said that the Lakers are going to need a third score simply because, number one, LeBron is older. So we're not talking about the Cleveland LeBron. We're not talking about the Miami LeBron. He's 38 years old. 38 is 38. He still can do it, but he can't do it like that. And the Dave is, is, is fragile. He can't, we already know he cannot last the season. It's not, it's not if he's going to get hurt. It's just when. He never had – he was hurt at Kentucky when he played at Kentucky. I mean, the kid just been hurt every year. So we're going to need a third option, and hopefully the guys can get health, and then you got three options. And I ain't talking about no Rudy Poop guys. I'm talking about a legitimate takeover type guy. The Dem I mean, the Portland Trailblazers lost to Denver. And Dame Lillard did it again. Dame Lillard just – electrified the, the whole NBA, how he killing people. He can't be stopped. And he did it again, but he got bounced out in the first round. Dame Lillard came out with a tweet pretty much for the first time complaining, wondering how, what he got to do. I'm saying Dame Lillard need to leave Portland. That's me. If he really wants to win, he's going to have to leave Portland because the big picture is not the Lakers. Everybody been talking about wherever LeBron went. That was the team to beat for the last 10 to 12 years. Wherever LeBron went, that was the team that you know you had to see if you were talking about winning a championship. At some point in time, you had to see LeBron James. It's changing now. 
the whole game about to change. The Brooklyn Nets are about to be the team that everybody, the LeBron name won't be called now. If you want to win the championship, you're going to have to go through Brooklyn. It's either going to start this year or it's going to start next year. It's one of the two. It's going to happen. But in order to beat James Harden, in order to beat Kevin Durant, and in order to beat Kyrie Irving, you're going to have to formulate a tag team with somebody. One man not going to beat them. So I threw out the idea like, my goodness, I know it ain't going to happen, but I was saying like, man, please, Dane. I say LeBron James need to be on the phone with Dane Lillard right now and just to see how serious he is or uh, how frustrated he is. And the analogy I put out was this. I said it's almost like Kevin Durant Kyrie Irving and James Harden are like Thanos. Thanos from, from the end game, Avengers end game. And LeBron is like Captain America at the end where he was all by himself. Oh, oh Keith, hey, Noop, I see you. Keith, Keith, I said, if they get past Milwaukee. Keith lives in Milwaukee. My fraternity brother lives in Milwaukee. I agree with you. I said, if. I think Milwaukee got a good shot at beating him. No question about that. But I said LeBron now is like Captain America at the end when he was all by himself and he ain't had, he ain't had but just that little shield and, you know, have a shield and, and Thanos had the whole army behind him and, and everything else. And, and Cap was ready to fight. Cap snatched that thing up and about to, if, if it would have been his last breath, he was going to fight. And I said, and then all of a sudden, the Falcon started talking to his head. Cap, look to you right. And all of a sudden, here come all the Avengers, piece by piece, person by person. Everybody, y'all remember that. Y'all remember how crazy y'all were going in the movie theater when you saw it. You saw all that. And I said, and, and it just dawned on me. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, Cap. I said, that was a great time. And maybe, you know, maybe I should have said, but hey, it's my show, so I can say what I want to say. I said, yeah, y'all cheered for Cap then. <laughs> I said, but you know, ever since the end game when Cap got old at the end and Cap handed that shield over to a, <laughs> a certain individual, a lot of y'all turned in y'all Marvel comic superhero cards, y'all. Y'all didn't like that. <laughs> Falcon, Falcon, and the Winter Soldier got a got a show on Disney. Ain't no, and a lot of folks that that have watched, you know, a lot of folks that have watched, you know, all the Marvel stuff. Y'all ain't watched that one because you know Cap turned that shield over to a. To uh, you know, <laughs> y'all understand where I'm going with it. Y'all, 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 uh, good, bad, and ugly. I see you over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, and I and I said, and and, and it just took me another different direction, and it just had me asking some questions. And some of y'all, maybe some of y'all can answer the questions. If you heard it yesterday, just just come on with me again today, if y'all mind. A lot of people. You know, bought tickets in advance for Iron Man 1, 2, and 3. You know, you bought tickets early in the morning to show one for, for late at night, y'all. Or you bought it for the next day. You they had no problem buying them tickets. You you bought it for Spider-Man. You you bought tickets early in the morning because you know every show was going to be packed. You did that. You bought it. You bought it for the Avengers, the first one and the second one and the third one. You bought it all in advance. You bought it for all that. You bought tickets for Thor. You bought tickets for the Hulk in advance because you knew it was going to be there. Ain't too many of y'all bought too many Black Panther tickets. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I wonder why. I wonder why. I wonder why. You, you didn't buy it. You didn't buy the, you, you know, you didn't buy the Black Panther tickets. And sure enough, I checked it out myself, y'all. I checked it out. I'm just giving you the facts. I checked out the ratings for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And, and before then, y'all lined up for Captain America movies. Y'all, y'all bought it all. Y'all, 
Y'all so bought the costume for your children to wear on Halloween. You bought the, the costume for, for Captain America. Go to your local Sam's Club or your local uh, your local uh, Costco. You couldn't find the Captain America. Everybody got them. My son got a Captain America uniform. He does. My son, he got it. He love Captain America. But man, when Cap, Cap got old and turned that shield over to that black man, Captain America uniform still they they still on on the rack right now. <laughs> they they still fresh. They 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 still fresh. They. They, 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 they still there. I checked the ratings out for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, y'all. It's down. The ratings are down. And please don't tell me because I don't have a Disney subscription. You got, you got everything else. You got Netflix. You got, you got, you got all, you got Hulu. You got, you got all this other stuff. You got, you got Disney too. You just ain't chosen. See, <clears throat> Matter of fact, some of y'all have already told some of I done seen it, y'all. I, I ain't saying nothing. I ain't, I ain't talking. I ain't saying. Some of y'all have already said it. And then the Avengers come out with another movie. You ain't going to watch it. <laughs> I got this one question. I just got, I'm finna go, y'all. I'm finna go. I just got one question. Why you don't want to watch Captain America no more? I thought everybody. <laughs> I thought everybody loved Captain America. Huh? Come on, talk to me real quick. We, we I, I, I'm still on this search. Stock, stock went down. Marvel, <laughs> Marvel stock went down. When, when Captain America got old and turned that shield on, and he told him, hey, you're Captain America now. You. You take the uniform, you take the shield, you do what you got. A lot of stock went down. If you want, if you play the stock game, go buy some Marvel comic stock. It went down. It ain't at the high price it was was before. Some of y'all look. Some of y'all didn't go see y'all. Y'all. Some of y'all still ain't seen the Black Panther. Some of y'all said, I'll wait, to, I, I, I'll wait to see it on DVD when it come out. I'll wait till it come on TV. You, didn't, you weren't in a rush to go to the movie theater then. That's the, look, that's the analogy I had, y'all. That's, that's, that's the analogy I had. And, and some people got, you know, offended. But, but as I said before, the truth hurts sometimes. And usually nine times out of ten, the people who are offended are the ones that probably fall right into that category. Y'all, 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 y'all funny. Y'all see, see, I better stop. See, you you can do you can you can you can do a whole lot more than say the N-word to show a little racism. So a lot of, you, you got some elementary-minded people that think. That if I call you the N word, that shows I'm a racist. But if I don't call you the N word, then I'm cool. No, no, you can show your racism in a lot of different other ways. It's just one of them. Even though I admit it to be kind of an analogy that turned into somewhat of a joke. Even though it's a joke, sometimes the jokes are truth. Some of y'all turned in y'all Marvel comedy cards. As soon as that man got that shield, you know I'm telling the truth. All right, I'm gonna get in trouble again. Y'all, y'all don't like me. Some of y'all, y'all, y'all said it. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> and look, this is y'all the big time show. That's what it is. I tell it like I see it. It's just my interpretation. Hey, yours may be different. I'm open to it. Okay, but the, really, I was just saying that in order to win. Because of the Brooklyn Nets, you are going to have to form an Avenger-like super team. You are. Damon Lillard will not beat the Brooklyn Nets, as great as he is. You got to go get it. 
You got to form up with somebody. If Look, if you want to be like Russell Westbrook and, and say, hey, I'm going to do it my way and all that. Look, Russell Westbrook is a great player. First ballot Hall of Famer, no doubt. He's going to the Hall of Fame. He he, But he said he don't want to team up with nobody. He want to do his own thing. Okay, you won't win. You'll get to the Hall of Fame. We'll see you in Springfield once you retire. But you're not going to win anything. If you want to go that route, so be it. Maybe Dame Little want to go that route. You're just not going to win. If you want to win, yes. Kevin Durant don't care. Kevin Durant went to Golden State when they was already dominant. Kevin Durant don't care. Kevin Durant want to put some rings on his finger. James Harden want to put some, finally want to put a ring on his. You got to beat that team, and in order to beat them four out of seven, you better have some 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 serious serious trouble on your team to beat them. It's not the Lakers anymore. It's the Brooklyn Nets. It's the it's the Brooklyn Nets now. They are the team to beat, in my view. All right, I'm done. Y'all mad at me. It's okay. Uh, listen, if you want to become a patron of the show, it's right there for you on Podbean. All you have to do on Podbean is just push that become a patron, and you can become one right then. If not, just follow the show. You'll hear some more stuff like this, some more foolishness and facts at the same time and ignorance and funny and religion and, and Dallas Cowboy, Little Lakers. You don't know what you're going to get with me. But it's going to be entertaining. I guarantee that. That part I can give you. It's going to be entertaining. Uh, if you're on Facebook right now, if you are on Facebook, here it is for you. Uh, if you want to become a premium member of the show as well, uh, let me put that here if I can. I don't think I can. So let me go back. I don't know why I cannot. Maybe my comments got me in trouble already. Who knows? I don't care. There it is for you right there. Uh, the Big Time Show 3 at supercast.tech. Write that down. It's earlier in the chat box as well. All you have to do is type that in. Go to that. You have the instructions there. You become a premium member of the show. Uh, that's all you have to do. It's right there for you. Uh, I would appreciate that. Hey, listen, thank you guys for hanging with me for this hour and about 20 minutes. Uh, listen, I will be with you guys on Tuesday uh, night at 7.30 p.m. Central uh, for another edition of the Big Time Show podcast. Until then, go to somebody's church on tomorrow. Whether you are going there uh, uh, individually, whether you're going there uh, in person or if you're going there virtually, go to somebody's church. I mean, go do something. Just just go get you some word. Uh, do that on tomorrow. And we'll see you on Tuesday. Stay tuned. I'm coming back uh, with uh, more Cowboy News probably on Tuesday. I didn't even get to my last part. I'll probably open up with that on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Uh, come check me out. Appreciate you so much. Listen, also, I guess I need to throw this in before you go. Uh, follow me on Podbean, of course, Google Podcast, Spotify, Pandora, iHeart Radio, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, or Twitch. I'm on all those platforms. My whole catalog is there. Uh, uh, you, you can listen to whatever episodes you want to, and uh, hopefully, you enjoy them. Uh, and have fun with them. Uh, tell somebody about the show. I appreciate everybody. I've got a lot of people on Podbean who have popped in. Uh, hello to you guys. You guys are coming in. Bishop Michael, I don't know you. Who are you, Bishop Michael? Uh, do I know you? I know the good, bad, and ugly. My partner is there. I see him talking. Bishop Michael, I used to know he's not live. He just popped in and popped back out. Okay, hello to – let me speak to these people that are on Podbean. Uh, the good, bad, and ugly, my guy, of course, is here. Uh, Miss Ty is here. Daniel is here. Alex, 88, Debs, hello. E. Mac, excuse me for not pronouncing that right, but E-M-A-C-K, 
U I L T E. Hello to you. And then Nan N A N E G Y E N. Hello to you too. I appreciate you guys for coming and hang with me on here. Hey, listen, if you don't follow me, at least follow me. Uh, and I would appreciate it. Again, those on Podbean, uh, excuse me, those on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch, appreciate you guys. I'm done, but as you already know, listen, you can't leave here without doing one thing for me. Some of y'all on Podbean already know what time it is. You can't leave. If you're not too mad, if you're not too, if you're not too mad at me, you know, and you're not too, you know, if 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 you feel good about it, the least you could do for me is one thing. Those on Facebook, Twitter, and everywhere else, the one thing y'all could do for me before you leave. Can y'all at least put your hands together for me? <laughs> yeah, I ain't scared, y'all. Y'all know me. This is, yeah, look, this is. Yes, it is. This is the big time show where ain't no telling what's going to be said. It's going to be respectful. It's going to be nice, but it's going to be the truth. Let the chips fall where they may. And they're going to fall here at the one and only. I see you guys Tuesday at 730. This is the big time show. Yeah! Clap your hands. I told you, you, got, you can't leave without clapping your hands. Come on. Woo! Good to see you again, good, bad, and ugly. It ain't telling what I'm going to say. Y'all know that. I love the Lord and I, I love the truth. Look, if the man black and you don't like a Captain America black, just say so. <laughs> Woo! This is <laughs> the big time. I can't even get it out. It's the big time show. I see you guys Tuesday. <laughs> Y'all pray for me here. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. <laughs>